Hey everyone, this is Ross, and to everybody out there who celebrates Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, it's a nice day here in Pennsylvania. It's about 50 degrees. It's going to be 50 degrees here. Um, sunny day. Can't ask for much more on a Christmas day. I know everybody wants that white Christmas, uh, but I personally would not want any snow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and also, we're officially farmers today, I think, right? Because um, we got overalls on, right? And isn't that what basically makes you a farmer, is if you're wearing overalls? Um, I'm pretty sure when you put on overalls, you just instantly, you become a farmer. Um, so I'm Farmer Ross today, and I want to thank you guys for joining me in this uh, this video this morning. I know probably a lot of you guys are busy with family and friends and whatnot, um, but I'm happy to, yeah, keep everybody company and uh, talk about a couple things with you guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be up potting, well, not really up potting, we're gonna be taking some soil. You can see here we have some pots and we have some other grow bag pots, different sizes, different materials and we're gonna be putting soil into these pots. And this is pretty much the beginning of the fig cutting rooting process for me, um, is getting all the soil in the pots. And I wanna to talk to you guys about the soil, I wanna to talk to you guys about the pots, I wanna to talk to you guys about the containers, um, because they all need a tray, right? They all have holes at the bottom and you want holes at the bottom. So they gotta have, they gotta be fit into some sort of tray, right? So we'll talk about this and uh, it'll be a nice Christmas day. So let's kind of get into it. First off, I wanna, I wanna mention the pot here. And the pot, I personally really like these plastic four by nine inch pots. Um, I just ordered a whole box of these. I got like 200 and some pots, somewhere around 100 and, $10, $120 for pots. But uh, this is pretty much the cheapest you can get them. This is the best quality you can get. This is the best thing that you're really looking for here. If you're doing this in a, in a high quantity as I am, you know, we're gonna root probably somewhere around 150 trees this year. Um, I do have some pots obviously left over from last year. As time goes on, we just run out of these things. We sell the trees, um, so we, we end up having to just buy pots almost every year. Um, I do have grow bag pots here, the fabric pots, and these I think are quite good, but I don't like to root cuttings in them. Um, I almost don't really like to have any seedlings in them either, but uh, if it's a smaller annual plant that I want to up pot and make it into a larger plant, like we did our tomato plants last year, we stuck our tomato plants um, in these plugs that we have. We had them in, originally in these plugs, I think, if I'm not mistaken. We took them basically from this size and then we up potted them into like three by three inch pots or four inch by four inch pots. And then we put them into this half gallon size grow bag. And this, it worked out well. I got myself a large root system, a large tomato plant that we stuck in the ground. And um, they actually didn't do that all that well. They didn't transplant that well. They're very susceptible to uh, aphids this year. And we didn't have any ladybugs that came in and got rid of the aphids. So those really didn't do all that hot, but the, the method of up potting them into these larger pots uh, worked out really well. And that's all I'm gonna use these for, from the, for the future. I'm, I'm done with these fabric grow pots. They're cheaper. Uh, you can get pretty much the same amount that I've ordered, that like 210 pots or whatever it is. For a cheaper price, I think it's probably somewhere around the range of maybe, uh, this is 80 bucks versus like 120 bucks or something like that. Uh, it might be 40 to 30, 30 to $50 cheaper. But uh, my issue here is that when I ship these to people, this holds up a lot better in the shipment. 
um, whereas the bag doesn't. And the bag is very subject to manipulation. Um, it's not a hard surface at all. And the, the root structure in the shipment doesn't hold up very well. And I, I can't really figure it out because I know that Stephen uh, Fruit Nut, my friend Stephen, who also sells plants, he ships them in these grow these fabric pots. And he does a really nice job of it. And they're in one solid piece when they arrive. Um, but I think he uses two boxes and that's kind of how he gets it all working right. You also need to have it, when you ship the plant, you want the whole thing nice and snug. Uh, you don't want the plant moving around or anything like that. So for me, I've just realized doing it this year and, and packing the plants, I didn't hear really any, uh, I didn't hear anyone complain but I imagine that there's probably some sort of issue with shipping these. If I wasn't going to ship them and sell them as trees, I, it wouldn't matter to me. It really wouldn't matter. I would use these uh, because they are cheaper. But the plastic I also find is better in the rooting process because they don't dry out as easy. I don't have to come in here and water them every day. But that could also be a good thing depending on what you're using. Uh, depending on your environment, right? Depending on what you're rooting, um, depending on your soil that you're using in the pot, it really all depends. And um, I do like the fact that you could basically fill up these grow bags with soil, put them in this plastic bin, and then water the bin. And then they uptake through um, just contacts through the bag the bag contacting with the water and then the soil also contacting with the water. Uh, it waters from the bottom up. And I think that's a better way and it's an also an easier way to do it. Rather than watering each individual pot, uh, I think there's some nice benefits. We did just talk about in a prior video the differences sort of between the fabric pots and the plastic pots and how I feel about all that. and. Um, Overall, we're just moving to plastic. I think it's uh, it's just overall better. Um, but they do, of course, have their you know their benefits and their particular situations that I've used them. So that's the breakdown there on the pot. Um, and as I've kind of alluded to already, is that we you can get trays for these things because they're not really the sturdiest things. They're going to fall over. Plus, when you water them at the bottom. Um, or if you water them from the top, it, it's going to come right out the bottom. There's a big hole at the bottom here. So getting yourself a bin, and I would recommend a heavy-duty bin. This is a really well-made bin. What ends up happening is you get the cheaper bins from, let's say, Home Depot, um, different brands. It doesn't matter if it's Home Depot or not, but uh, different brands will crack and they'll break, and the bins won't last very long at all and you end up you really should just end up going with the the more heavy duty bin because that's not going to break and at the end of the day you're probably using less plastic and you're also saving yourself more money so i would get a heavier duty bin or get yourself some sort of tray these these pots themselves come with trays if you order them separately it's it's more money but um, i do also like the design of these pots here that I've ordered. The design's different. They slide out of here easier. They stack easier. Um, and overall, I think they're just better quality. I have to say, I really like this new design that they have here. By the way, I'm getting all of this stuff from greenhousemegastore.com. Should get some kind of promotion from them. But uh, you know what? It is what it is. And uh, I'll tell you, it's probably the cheapest place you can get them. I think you can get them also from Stewie and Sons. But uh, at the prices that I've been able to find, the Greenhouse Mega Store so far has the cheapest prices. You may be able to find some on AM Leo, but uh, amleo.com. They have free shipping, I think, even today. But I'm not sure if they carry these, to be honest with you. So. It is what it is. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start filling these up with soil, as I mentioned to you guys. 
and uh, the soil is actually it's a little frozen so I may have to wait a little bit here for this to thaw out and it's gonna be really cold as I do this but you know what it is what it is um, so we're just gonna fill these up and put them into their respective um, plastic bins and then I put the plastic bins in the house let the soil warm up for a bit a couple days maybe a day it really doesn't take that long and then I begin the rooting process and we'll kind of talk about <clears throat> how I'm going to be doing the rooting process this year. We already have a whole playlist on this whole process. So I'd go back. I'd recommend going back and watching those videos. But I do want to talk to you guys today about the soil here that I'm using. And it's pretty simple. I use the same stuff for everything I do. Um, it's basically 50% compost, 50% pine bark. At this point, most of it's compost. It's not the most well-draining um, material here. There's also a little bit of fertilizer in here just because this was originally from some bigger pots I had and I dumped it into this raised bed, but it holds the right amount of moisture. That's really what I'm looking for here. Um, I like to use compost. I don't like to use a soilless mixture like a lot of people will recommend peat moss and perlite and vermiculite and uh, and rice holes. Well, yeah, I guess rice holes too. Uh, or diatomaceous earth people are doing nowadays. Um, there's some benefits to that, obviously, but uh, I've had the most success and the best success and um, really the the it's the least hassle right when when i think when we try to complicate things we make things way too complicated we really should simplify everything in our lives um if we simplify we end up getting better uh we end up performing better as an athlete uh as whatever it is that you do at your job um this we don't need to complicate uh things the simpler simpler they are the better um so me using the same soil I use for everything, it just makes it a lot easier in that sense, right? That way I don't have to go out, I don't have to get peat moss, I don't have to get vermiculite, I don't have to get perlite, I don't have to get all these different materials. Then I don't have to mix them all up, put them all together and say, all right, well, this is the perfect mixture. Well, it might be the perfect mixture, but uh, who wants to go through all that? You know, This is the material that I know works well. It's well draining, it holds the right amount of water, it has some nutrients in it. Um, now there is a big debate people have, and I've been hearing more about this, and it does make some sense in terms of like, uh, you know, um, it just has, it, there's a lot of common sense involved where a lot of people will argue that if I use a compost, um, something with soil in it, right not not a soilless mixture this material here the earth the dirt has microbes in it um, and other things in it that are trying to rot my cutting so when i put my cutting which is fresh and isn't isn't rotting i stick it in this material here uh, some people would argue that well this is creating that process of um, rotting material right that's what compost is in a way it's high in soil life and that stuff will try to continuously break down my cutting um, through that natural process of just creating compost right you take a stick you put it in the compost pile it's going to start to turn into uh, compost itself right assuming it's active um, but this is not a very active material here that we're using. This isn't the most active compost. Um, also, the cutting itself has a natural defense against such things. It wants to be propagated in a way. Um, these plants want to survive. They have these natural things in them. And if we were to put this in a soilless mixture, which they say isn't rotting the cutting in any sense because it's soilless. It doesn't have those that that uh, that life in it. 
um, then as a result, we're going to have higher success that way, right? That's what everybody's saying. But if we were to rob our cuttings of needing that natural defense process, we're essentially creating a very um, stress-free environment. And these plants thrive on stress, man. They need that stress from the very beginning. Neglect is how we create stronger and healthier plants. Um, especially not by intervening ourselves. You know, I don't think these plants have been propagated for years. I mean, I'm sure some of them have been propagated in peat moss. How many of them have been propagated over the years and have evolved with perlite or vermiculite um, you know I guess not the cuttings that I'm growing you know um, I guess it maybe you could make an argument for a certain plant uh, versus a certain plant that likes to be propagated in something else but at the end of the day there is an argument that's pretty valid for using a soilless mixture but I just don't agree with it and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense um, because we should be neglecting our fruit trees. The more neglect or the more care we give our fruit trees, the lower the quality of the fruits, the less fruit we get, um, and the more growth we get, right? So that's pretty much the video here, guys. Uh, I gave you guys some nice life lessons in this one. Maybe a little bit of comedy in the beginning. Um, we're going to try to include more of that here in the videos, guys, as we go forward. I actually would have liked to have done more work in this bed, but uh, the soil is frozen. And until it, it, it thaws out, probably in the next couple hours, uh, I can't do anything with the soil, uh, which is unfortunate. But eventually we'll get our act together here. We'll get the soil in there. It's a shame because I really wanted to get this all going. Um, so I could start the rooting process tomorrow um, after work, but uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching this, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me on Christmas. We'll see you guys soon, all right? And uh, I would just, another reminder, check us out on FigBid. We have some cuttings for sale. Check out our blog, FigBoss. Dot com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you guys soon. Have a nice holiday. Take care, everybody.